Hey, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I'm going to take you through a couple of reels that were purchased at a fraction of their value because they're parts reels, and each one of them I think is I'm going to be able to give a second chance to. It's just a matter of uh, trying to locate some pieces and parts for the reels or just knowing what I know in terms of restoring the reels. So I want to take you through that. Uh, there's about six or seven reels in here, and I just want to show you uh, projects that you could look at. If you're in the uh, hobby of real repair, some of the things that uh, are tips in terms of, of trying to determine whether these reels are worth uh, your effort and also uh, how to find them and, and the like. But before we do, I want to take a moment to thank our first responders and essential personnel, everybody involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic. They are our, our local hometown heroes. All of our uniform services, the fire, EMT, police, uh, rescue, first responders like the um, first aid squads and the volunteers that are all manning those kinds of, of assist organizations. And finally, to our essential personnel, the delivery drivers, the folks in the supply chains, the folks working in our markets, all of the people in the medical fields, whether you're in a hospital in a COVID ward or whether you're just, uh, not just, but whether you're working in a acute care or long-term care facility or a GP's office. Uh, thank you for staying by us, staying with us, and trying to keep us safe. So let's take a look now at the uh, the reels that I got, and we'll take you through a little bit of what may need to be done on those reels, if it's practical to do that, and, uh, and then stay tuned uh, to see if I can bring some of these back. So the first one is kind of an interesting reel. This is a reel that's in nice condition. <laughs> It's a browning reel. It's the browning Midas. And browning for a bit there uh, took over Mitchell after Mitchell went into bankruptcy. This one's a mess because it's just spooled. It hasn't uh, kept there. But the issue with this one is a missing button. Now, I have a lot of buttons around, but I'm certain I don't have a browning button. So here's a clue. If you find yourself in a position like this, this is a relatively standard thread on uh, fishing reels, they, they come in assorted sizes, and those assorted sizes generally are based on, well, the size of the fishing reel. The uh, bigger those reels, those axle shafts get, uh, get wider in diameter, and those threads get a little bit wider. So, of course, a button for a, uh, a big reel is probably not going to fit that. But when you get underneath to the reels that are in this size, which is probably the 1500 size, there's should be a knob out there, even though it's not a browning knob, that should be able to fit this. Now, sometimes you're going to find that the depth of the spool will not be accommodative to the, the depth of the button. Sometimes the buttons are flat on the bottom, and here you need an indent. Well, if you find that is the case, you might be able to work by putting a series of shim washers or other pieces in there to build that up. So we're going to try and find that one. I think I'll do this one as a project as soon as I can get the line off of this. And uh, we'll show you the results of that and see if we can give this reel a second chance. Because other than missing the knob, that reel is in nice condition. So then I was able to pick up two Daiwa reels. Chris is probably looking at this as a very interesting reel. This is the AB4050. This is a big uh, rear drag fishing reel. And I bought a pair of these. And the problem with both of these is that there is no anti-reverse. Well, I'm not that familiar with this reel. I'm not sure if this is something that can be easily repaired or if this is something that, uh, well, we're just going to be stuck with. But I hope to find out what the cause of the problem is, if it can be repaired. And if it is, well, then I got two nice Korean-made Daiwa uh, AB4050s with a rear drag for, uh, well, very little money. So uh, we're going to do this as a video. I like to do videos on why reels fail. I find it unusual that I have a pair of reels and both of them have failed for the same reason. Uh, but we'll get underneath that and we'll see if we can make these work. And again, <laughs> I don't know why, but we're all tangled up here with line on these as well. I like to take the line off when I work on reels, particularly if they're my reels. Okay, big find here. I got a, uh, a later model, I think, uh, 704 pen with a broken bail. So you want to test, when you have a broken bail, you need to know, is the spring working first? Well, 
this side spring is working. There should be a spring on this side as well. And that's that's a little bit less, but it's working. And you know what I've said about sticky bail pieces. The uh, What you want to do on these is you want to spray these with a penetrating oil first and foremost. That'll enable you to loosen this up. In this case, I'm going to have to replace this. I'm going to have to get a bail. This is the side that actually needs to be replaced. I do not need to work on this side at all. And that's a good thing. And uh, we will uh, try and get this one going again. Now, it's also stuck. So this will be a good lesson in how to restore a reel. So we had something that broke in here from a bail standpoint. We also have a frozen reel. My guess is that the reel is frozen because of, of bad grease. This will make a great video project and I'll certainly do that one as part of the uh, how to uh, restore a reel and uh, the like. But why did I do this? Well that bail is probably going to be, well with shipping, probably 15 or $16. You're not going to find a um, Generally, you're not going to find a used bale out there anywhere. And uh, by the time you get done with shipping, you might as well just pay the $12 or $13 plus the shipping to do that. Uh, and uh, these are still highly regarded. So price paid, uh, not that much. Another $12. I'll certainly recover the pricing uh, on this, but I got to make it go first. And we will do that as a video. Here's another one that came in a lot. Now, this I was working with a fellow at a flea market. The fellow at the flea market buys lots, and um, when they're broken, he just calls me because uh, he has no interest in repairing them or trying to make them work. And he'll call me up and will generally strike a deal for a little bit more than he's paid for the reels. And in this case, I got a reel that I have no clue what it even is. It's an LF 7000. There's no branding. This says ball bearing. It says one ball bearing here. There's nothing to indicate whose this reel is. And they probably are just not, uh, not that proud of it, I guess. So what we have here is a bail wire that is snapped off, a broken bail arm, and that tells me that this is good for parts. Uh, there's no, no sense trying to restore a reel like this. It doesn't command any value in the marketplace. It doesn't have an anti-reverse working. It uh, doesn't have a, a bail. You need a, a bail arm to go with that. Uh, there's not much that's going to be salvageable about this. But again, I work with a vendor at a flea market. I pay him for what he's got. Sometimes you just suck it up and say, you know what? Uh, Maybe I can find a use for that handle. Hey, maybe I can find a use for that handle because the next one he gave me has a broken handle. This one is a quantum iron. It's a nice reel. It's uh, got a nice balance system to it. It's four ball bearings. This one is, is turning nicely. So all we're missing is the handle on this one. We have a broken handle. And if I can find a handle, then uh, it's going to work. Now, one of the things I noted earlier was with that browning reel, with that browning reel we found out that we have a situation where you don't have the button up top here and I mentioned that those are often interchangeable. Well it's the same thing with handles. There's only a couple of patterns on handles. This one has a through handle and it has a hex, pa it has a, um, a pen pentagonal, is that the right word? Five-sided. Five uh, handle with a through screw. So we got a couple of options with this one. One of these is to make, because the shaft is not broken on this, we can knock the roll pin out of this. If that's a roll pin, it may be a screw, I'm not sure. But either way, we can knock this out and just find a handle. So this one, well that one doesn't have a, a, uh, a through pin on it. I guess there's nothing salvageable on that reel. But I can find another one that has a replacement handle that has the grip and we can go ahead and uh, we can do it that way. So I truly expect to get this one tuned up. I haven't done this quantum reel so we're going to do this from a service standpoint and hopefully we're going to find that replacement handle somewhere. If not, at least the arm. And uh, if, if and when I find that arm, we'll, uh, we're going to do the whole thing as a service on this one to show you how to do the Quantum IR5F, which is a 50 size reel. And this one was made in Korea. So Quantum, uh, Quantum and Zebco are uh, part of the same company, were part of the same company. I guess all of that's just been sold off now. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we can certainly try and make this one work. And then finally, I got a parts wheel, right? Here's a reel that doesn't make any sense to try and restore because you're just missing too many parts. You're missing the handle, you're missing the spool, you're missing the knob. By the time you start to add all of that up, uh, that's more than the reel is worth. But the reel is worth something. This is a Daiwa 1600C. It was made in Japan. It's in the part of the Silver Series. That's a nice reel overall. So we're going to uh, see what we can do here. Somebody was playing around with this reel because they've installed the bale backwards. That uh, kind of always is an interesting thing, right? The, uh, this bale arm should flip around. You can just see how uh, it's just riding silly, but uh, I guess when something went wrong, somebody started playing with it and made it go worse. But this actually flips over completely. It should be mounted from this side, and the screw should be coming in from here. So those are projects that I picked up. Again, I just uh, made friends with a vendor at a flea market. Uh, we kind of said that, uh, you know, when he gets these kinds of things in, uh, we'll talk about them in terms of me servicing the reels. If he doesn't want the reels, we'll pay a fair price for them, uh, and knowing that they're, they're parts reels. And if he, uh, if he wants them back, well, we've got a, a little deal on the side there about me servicing them and uh, restoring them for him to sell. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, again, if you're a first responder, thank you for all it is that you do. If you uh, want to see more of these, please subscribe. If you have any questions on these reels, please leave them in the comment section. Or a question on any reel, leave them in the comment section. Finally, if you have a reel that needs to be serviced, if you contact me by the email on the business card that follows, I'll be happy to provide you with repair information. So please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.